Lesson 7 for November 9 to 15, Our Forgiving God. Tuesday, November 12, Lessons from the Past. Question. Read Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 9 through 22. How does this part of the prayer differ from the first part? Nehemiah 9, beginning at verse 9. You saw the affliction of our fathers in Egypt and heard their cry by the Red Sea. You showed signs and wonders against Pharaoh, against all his servants, and against all the people of his land. For you knew that they acted proudly against them. So you made a name for yourself, as it is this day, and you divided the sea between before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and their persecutors you threw into the deep, as a stone into the mighty waters. Moreover, you led them by day with a cloudy pillar, and by night with a pillar of fire, to give them light on the road, which they should travel. You came down also on Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them just ordinances and true laws, good statutes and commandments. You made known to them your holy Sabbath and commanded them precepts, statutes and laws by the hand of Moses your servant. You gave them bread from heaven for their hunger and brought them water out of the rock for their thirst and told them to go in to possess the land which you had sworn to give them. But they and our fathers acted proudly, hardened their necks and did not heed your commandments. They refused to obey and they were not mindful of your wonders that you did among them. But they hardened their necks And in their rebellion, they appointed a leader to return to their bondage. But you are God, ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and did not forsake them. Even when they made a moulded calf for themselves and said, This is your God that brought you up out of Egypt and worked great provocations, yet in your manifold mercies you did not forsake them in the wilderness. A pillar of the cloud did not depart from them by day to lead them on the road, nor the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way they should go. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them, and did not withhold your manna from their mouth, and gave them water for their thirst. Forty years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing, their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. Moreover, you gave them kingdoms and nations, and divided them into districts, So they took possession of the land of Sihon, the land of the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, king of Bashan. The prayer transitions from praising God for his faithfulness to recounting the contrasting unfaithfulness of the Israelites in their Egypt and wilderness experiences. It outlines all the different things God gave the Israelites. But unfortunately, the response of the fathers to those gifts was pride, stubbornness, and disregard of God's gracious acts among them. The acknowledgement of human failure and lack of true devotion to God is an important step in confession and repentance. And even though these texts are talking about people long removed from us, No one can deny that every single one of us has a problem with those same issues. Of course, here is where the gospel comes in for us as well as for them. Confession of our sins does not save us. Only Christ's sacrifice in our behalf does. Confession, along with repentance, is central to our own acknowledgement that we must be justified by Christ alone, as we read in Selected Messages, Ellen White Writing, Book 3, page 191. When, through repentance and faith, we accept Christ as our Saviour, the Lord pardons our sins and remits the penalty prescribed for the transgression of the law. The sinner, then, stands before God as a just person. He is taken into favour with heaven, and, through the Spirit, has fellowship with the Father and the Son. End of quote. At the same time, because his goodness causes us to confess our sins and repent of them, we must be determined by God's power to forsake them as well. 
The bottom line is that Israel had been stubborn, and God had been loving. Looking back at what God did for the Israelite nation reminded the people that because God had done so much for them in the past, He would continue to take care of them at the present moment and in the future. That was why it was so important for the people always to remember how God had acted in their history. It was when they forgot that they got into trouble. So, to finish the day, think back to times you were certain that God had been working in your life. How can you draw comfort from that for yourself the next time you face struggles? How can you better learn to trust in the goodness of God amid times you feel completely discouraged, let down, and fearful for the future? This week's lesson has been read by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. It is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department, and through the services of Christian Services for the Blind. A video of this podcast also occurs on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.